Hi folks, Dave, the Honest Audiophile. This is the Creative Labs Sound Blaster X4, and these are my Honest Audiophile impressions. I want to thank Creative Labs for sending over the Sound Blaster X4 for a review. To greatly appreciate it, Creative Labs, you rock. All right, so the X4, this will set you back $150 from your bank account. It is a gaming deck amp with a bunch of other features. And it has microphone inputs, it has 7.1 and 5.1 surround sound capabilities, and it has all kinds of EQs and DSPs and sound effects, all kinds of stuff that you can uh, use it for. If you're coming for all the gaming stuff and an in-depth uh, review about all the capabilities and all the modes and all the buttons that you can switch and all that kind of stuff, you're going to have to look elsewhere. This review is just going to focus on the sound reproduction of the X4. These days, I'm not much of a gamer. I don't play many first-person shooters, and I'm mostly playing sports and racing sims. So my gaming experience is very limited, especially considering that I only play off of a PlayStation PS4 Pro. So I also listen to music mostly. I don't really do a whole lot of gaming, so it's going to be a review focused on the sound reproduction. If you're looking for all the other stuff, you're going to have to go elsewhere. I'll put a link down below to a review that I found to be helpful when it came to all the different modes and explaining how to do with this and that with the device. All right, anyways, the X4 comes in this box. Get a picture, get some information, specs all over the place. Information galore. On the inside you're going to get an absolute mountain of paperwork. You do get a couple of cheat sheets with some information which we're going to use. And then the other information is very helpful, but the cheat sheet will explain a few things a little bit better. You also get a very, very short cable for optical to coax. It's extremely short and it never lost its curve. It's very springy and extremely short. This is probably about a foot and a half, maybe two feet long. And then you get this USB cable, which is about triple the length of the uh, optical cable. I wish they had made it the same uh, length, but again, this cable just never lost its kink. And then you get the X4. Now the Sound Blaster X4 is a nicely built device. It's small and thin. Got this big, huge volume knob up top. Something I have to note, and sorry, Creative Labs, I tried to be extremely careful with the X4, but over time with just moving it around in various places in the office and taking a couple tr trips on vacation, it got some boo-boos and it started to uh, lose its color. It got dinged up. So I do apologize for that. You got this nice big volume knob. It's extremely light, something like 380 grams. It's got big feet here. It's going to hold it in place. It doesn't move anywhere once it's on the desk. You got your volume knob. Pressing, pressing it um, up and down will mute your music. On the front here, you have microphone output, input, output, and then you have your headphone output. And you have three buttons here. First button controls the uh, microphone capabilities. Middle one is your mode button, which will change your EQs and put you in direct mode. And then the other one will change your headphone output or your speaker output. On the back side, you have your USB-C input. This will either be powered by your computer and also do your digital um, conversion, or you can plug the USB-C into a wall wart and it'll power it. And then you can use one of the other inputs which is your optical input. You have a line optical input here also. And then you have your speaker outputs. I did not have the cables to connect the, the speakers. And also I don't have a 7.1 or 5.1 system. Overall, it's well built, very easily laid out. Now, some of the functions of it will go over very quickly. As I mentioned, I didn't use all of them, but I did test out a few of them. So my little cheat sheet here. In the far side here, you can control your, your microphone. 
and there's several different things that you can do. You control your input of your volume or your in your output of your volume with that. You can get balanced sound. And then in the middle is the mode button. Pressing and holding that will take you into direct mode. That turns off the internal DAC and it goes based off of whatever your source is that you have connected. And the LED will be orange. And then if you want to use the internal DAC, there's three EQs. You have music, movies, and footsteps. And then, as I said, the other button controls your outputs. So I found that the sound of the X4 is pretty good. I was rather impressed by it. The, the X4, I used it for gaming. I played several sports games and uh, such things as FIFA and uh, basketball. I played a baseball game and a couple other things. And I did some game, some some sim racing with Project Cars, a set of Corsa, a Compensione, original a set of Corsa, and a few other racing games. And then I did try it with Battlefield 1. And I found that overall for gaming, the X4 is very good. It has nice capabilities for imaging and placement. It's very accurate. And I found while I was playing Battlefield 1, I felt a little bit more competent than normal. And maybe I need to use the X4 when I do this. I actually, I know this is going to sound crazy, but I rarely ever play them. And I was able to finish one of the campaigns. And I was actually rather proud of that. And I do think that it was because I was using the X4 because I was able to hear things a little bit better and I just had a little bit more confidence in where things were. As strange as that sounds. But racing and sports games, I was able to notice things also in that I had a little bit more uh, rumble and grumble when it came to motors and tires hitting rumble strips and various other things like that. And then the placement of things, I could tell whether I was on the right side or the outside, inside, if it was behind me, how close it was, if it was coming up on me, you know, things like that. There was, there was a nice sense of placement and the environment around me. And it just made me feel a little bit more immersed and a little bit more involved, I guess you could say. So it did a very good job in that. And I was really impressed. But as I said earlier, the most of the time that I was that I spent with the X4 was listening to music. So transitioning over to the desk, turning on music, and I used the internal deck and amp, and I, I just started listening. And I was flipping through the different EQs. Music EQ is solid. It has a little bit of a warmth to it, a little coziness. And it definitely has a, a, an enhancement. You get a little bit extra bass and it, and it just has this little bit of body to things. And I didn't mind it. It was enjoyable, especially with more modern music. Going into direct mode, it became like a more accurate reproduction. It wasn't as enhanced. I didn't have that lushness and the soundstage opened up a little bit it didn't seem to make everything intimate and it just sounded more realistic and reproduced the way that i'm used to hearing it and then i started comparing it to the things on the desk and that's when i noticed that it's a little bit compressed it's a little bit always intimate and it always has a slight warmth to it and it's okay but it's not great and i could live with it kind of if i wasn't reviewing and i wasn't so picky and nitpicking at everything i could probably survive but i wouldn't be content and so I started to compare it to other devices that I have. And when it came to the gaming experience, I was very content. But I'm not a gamer. And it's kind of like the G5. They're very similar in sound and capabilities when it comes to gaming. But when it comes to music playback, the G5 is not very good. And I don't use the G5 for music playback at all. The X4... I can tolerate it if I'm just listening to music and not being nitpicky. 
But the other thing is the headphone power. With IEMs, it's very good. No problems whatsoever powering IEMs. Headphones, if it's an efficient headphone, it'll power them. But if it's something that's a little harder demanding, like a planar or a 300 ohm headphone or higher, it struggles. It might get them to volume, but it's not really producing them to their potential. And you're not really getting the full sonic reproduction that those headphones are capable of. And so you have to look at any amplifier to use. And I, I, I just found that the DAC in the X4 was holding it back. And of course it is only 24192, which should be good enough and usually is. But at the same time, it just wasn't like the other stuff that I have on the desk. And when I say that, I mean, like the JDS Labs DAC Plus and the Atom Amp Plus, they're both superior to the X4. And, and it's not even close. The, the JDS Labs is a very neutral sounding device, and it has a very clean and a crisp re reproduction of sound and it's just a very natural note note weight and a very natural tone and timbre and the x4 is warm and lush and ooey gooey and you just can't you just don't get the clarity and you don't get the details and resolution it's not bad but the jds is better and the jds labs atom is stack the DAC and the amp cost two hundred and ten dollars so for roughly 50 bucks more, you get a whole lot better experience for music reproduction than you do with the X4. Now, gaming-wise, the JDS Labs Atom stack is good, but it doesn't compete with the X4, especially with all the extras that you can add in with the, with, with the EQs and all that kind of stuff. So, to wrap all this up, and all this rambling that I've been given, if you're really into gaming and music is just kind of a side thing that you listen to and you just kind of have it on in the background or you just, you know, listen to it while you're reading gaming reviews or, or chatting it up on Discord or something, the X4 would be okay. But when it comes to actually music reproduction and if you're nitpicking and you really strive to get the best reproduction of sound out of your DAC and amp for the budget, the X4 is just not going to cut it. And it, it's good enough for the casual gamer, but it's not good enough for the everyday audiophile. And it does one thing really good. Gaming. Music, it does okay. It's been Dave, the Honest Audiophile. Thank you for watching. And I'll catch you on the next video. Speaking of next video, somewhere on screen, subscription links and notification bells. If you haven't already, please check those off. Don't forget to give a thumbs up or a thumbs down to the video. And also check out all the links down below. There's all kinds of information down there regarding how you contact channel, follow channel, support channel, all that kind of stuff is listed down below. Speaking of supporting the channel, if you are interested in supporting the channel, there are many ways that you can do it through one-time gifts through PayPal and Venmo or through monthly subscriptions with YouTube memberships and Patreon. If you are interested in joining my private Discord server, there are tiers in both the YouTube memberships and in Patreon that will get you access to that. Also, there are tiers there that will get you some private live streams with patrons only, or if you want to have a private conversation with me, you can have that also with some Discord tiers, or excuse me, with Patreon tiers. So if you're interested in any of that and supporting the channel, Check out the links down below. Lastly, don't forget to enjoy the music and that honesty is the best policy.